and this is Changing the Narrative. I am David Reeves, and I'm joined with Nick Harp today. Nick, where did you come from? Well, we just came uh, from Michigan today, uh, so we've uh, spent the last about nine hours on the road to get here. So, <laughs> And literally arrived about 15 minutes ago. Yes, yep. So you've been on the road all day long. Yes, sir. But you're headed down to an archery event. Yes, we are. We're going to head to Fort Benning, which is a Georgia-Alabama line. We're, we're literally on the border, and so we're, we're bouncing between two time zones while we're there as well. So Okay, well, that's great. That is good. Well, tell me just a little bit about what you do and kind of both professional careers because you have there's two sides to what you do absolutely so uh well you can see i'm in my matthews attire today so i am a professional archer i shoot for matthews uh the best bow company around in my opinion Amen. and uh and so uh we travel to all the national asa 3d archery tournaments uh ibo uh triple crown ibo worlds uh we bounce between both federations uh, right now it's asa season uh, we just kicked off uh, last month with the first tournament of the year in Foley, Alabama, down on the in Gulf yeah. Shores, beautiful area, and uh, had a wonderful time down there. And as we're at the shoots competing, uh, I'm there all week long with a booth, and uh, and we do a sunrise service on Sunday mornings. Um, so we have God's Country Outdoor Ministries as well. And I'm the pastor for ASA. I do sunrise services at 6 a.m. at every event. And uh, and we spend the week when I'm not competing, sharing the gospel with uh, people as they come through the booth and and Sunday mornings. And uh, so, yeah. So let's just say there's a there's a competition happening uh, on Sunday. Uh, You're up before the crack of dawn, uh, getting ready, giving a sermon. Yep. And then after all that's over, uh, you have a booth set up. People can come by and talk to someone for spiritual advice, for yes. some encouragement, grab a cup of coffee. But while that's going on, after you get through with that sermon, you are grabbing a bow and heading out into the field to actually compete with the rest of them. So I am at the IBO shoots, but in ASA, I compete on Friday and Saturday. Oh, okay. So I'm allowed to take my Sundays off and kind of hang out <laughs> and uh, and spend the time visiting with individuals that that's aren't good. out there competing. So Well, that's good. Yep. That sounds like... Uh, a lot to juggle it is uh so you know um at this last tournament you know we were on the tournament site at 6 a.m every single morning uh brewing coffee matter of fact i think that saturday we brewed 32 pots of coffee that morning <laughs> um my wife she's kind of my timekeeper while we're there we, we travel as a family and and uh saturday morning i have to be on the line at 7 30 oh yeah and it's a quarter after seven and she's like tapping the watch and you got to get out there I, i'm like a mile away from where my stake was that morning that I had to be on. And so uh, I rushed out there, and, and uh, I didn't even get a cup of coffee myself. I was so busy that morning. <laughs> uh, then we, uh, I open up in prayer with my group before we start the mornings uh, every time we compete. And, um, and then I shoot for a few hours, and, and then I'm rushing back to the booth to meet up with everybody there, too. So Wow. Well, let's, let's back up for a minute. Uh, we call this podcast Changing the Narrative because today there is this narrative that we get. We get it in the media. We get it on television every time. Uh, we, we get this with a lot of our coworkers who might be skeptics. The narrative is that, you know, hey, you and I, we're just here by chance. It's intellectual to be an atheist. That's the cool thing. You know, there is no God and there's no need for even believing in God. And yet we realize, I mean, you see out in God's creation, everywhere you go, this beauty, this complexity, this design that we realize design requires a designer, doesn't it? Absolutely. So what we want to do is we want to kind of encourage people that we have worth because we are made in God's image. Absolutely. Talk us through bow hunting and talk us through competition, archery, and Let's look at the design in archery, the design of, let's just say, a Matthews bow. Yeah. And then let's ask the question, could it all have just happened by chance? Yeah, you know, uh, it, it's trying to say, like, uh, say I, I – uh on the way here, I hit a lot of potholes in the road, you know, and I got some cams and some strings and some metal in the back of my truck, you know, and, and I hit this giant pothole, 
And when I got out and I opened the tailgate of my truck, there's this bow laying there all perfectly done. That's impossible, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, that's what happens by chance. I mean, it had to have a creator. Right. It is intricate. There are so many little parts on there that are perfectly put together. Isn't it the truth? And, and you know, and that's a great analogy, by the way, because we realize that that we would laugh at that, yeah. right? We would say, "No, there's no way." Of yeah. course, somebody made that bow, and yet, I would say that the skeptics, the atheists, their answer to that is to say, "Well, I know it sounds ridiculous that we're here by chance, that we just, you know, happened by mutations and natural selection, but you see, given enough time." Anything is possible. Over millions of years, maybe a cam is going to connect to a string in such a way that it will build a bow accidentally. And even that is ludicrous. But that's the only way they can get away with it is just to add time. I know. And uh, but say something accidentally happened. How can you perfectly make another one of that something and another one and another one and another one? I mean, it's it's impossible. You know, when you think about it that way. You would also have to make a female counterpart for the male so that <laughs> offspring could continue. Exactly. So <laughs> uh, it is so crazy why people uh, perceive these things. And, and, and I think a lot of it's because they're depressed with how they are in life. And, and uh, uh, unfortunately, I see what happens a lot of times is somebody might have prayed for something to God. Yeah, God's not a genie. You don't you don't just go grant you three wishes. I'm sorry, it's just not how it works. So they expected something. That if God, if I give you this, if I do this for you, you know, will you do this for me? Type deal. That's not how it works. Yeah. Um, and when God didn't come through how they seen fit, you know, they then they don't want to believe. They don't want to put their faith in Him. And um, Unfortunately, I see way too much of that going on. Yeah, it's, it is easy to get discouraged. We do have a God that answers prayers. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. But sometimes he doesn't answer our prayers in the way we ask because it's not for our own good. Sometimes the things that we really want, we don't see the bigger picture. Yeah. He's outside of the universe looking back in, absolutely. seeing everything, the grand scheme. And... Sometimes it does hurt. Sometimes we see this pain, we see this suffering, we see disease, we see death. And then we have to remind ourselves, well, look, this this pain, this disease, and this death, that's our fault. Yeah. Back in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they were given very simple instructions. You know, just don't eat out of that tree. Don't eat from the fruit of that one tree. Over there. Everything else is yours. You enjoy this, right? Yeah. And they couldn't keep their hands off of it. And we've been suffering uh, under the curse of sin ever since. Yeah. But what does the Bible tell us coming in the future? Well, you know, Jesus paid that price on, yeah. on the cross for us, you know, and uh, he paid so we didn't have to. All we have to do is accept, but then he's going to come again for us as well. And um, obviously, unless you got blinders on, uh, you can see what's going on in the world today. Yeah. There, There's a lot of people suffering, a lot of tragedies going on. I mean, this last couple of years is we've seen stuff that I couldn't have imagined in my lifetime. Yeah. And, um, but the Bible has that all laid out. There, there's going to be a lot of trials. That's right. You know, and, and the closer we come to Christ's return, we're going to see more and more of these, you know. Hey, that's, uh, look, I kind of find that encouraging. I mean, no, nobody likes going through trials, but like you said, as it gets closer, we're going to see things winding down to a close, and that's really exciting to be living in these times. It is. It, it is so exciting, and uh, you know, it gets me fired up that much more to go share the good news of Jesus Christ and what He's done with people. Because we got to be ready. Yep. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. I mean, I made it here today, but it wasn't a guarantee. There was a couple accidents up the road. I don't know. Mm. You know, I, I, I texted you earlier saying, "Hey, we're we're coming into some traffic jams. There were some bad accidents." It's not a guarantee that we're going to see tomorrow. No. Um, you know, after the last event, I, I don't think I've had a chance to share this with you, but, you know, there's there's always seems to be a tragedy going on somewhere. And uh, we had some very good friends of ours. Um, as we were on our way back from Foley, Alabama, uh, neighbors to my in-laws, their house blew up. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, and, and our friend worked from home, and his daughter was there with his four-year-old daughter, and uh, they had a gas leak you know, that they didn't know about. And, um, uh, when it blew up, it blew him out of the house mm -hmm. and, uh, and Jeremy ran in 
saved his daughter, ran up the burning stairs, got her out with uh, barely a scratch on her. But through that, it took his life. Is that right? You know, and, and that was a very tragic time. He didn't wake up that morning thinking, this is going to be my last day. This is what's going to happen. Uh, praise the Lord. He, he, he was born again, though, and he's up in glory right now. Um, that's right. But there's so many tragedies going on. And, uh, and that's why I'm like, it got me that much more fired up to share with people because I want to reach people before it's too late. Yes. Uh, you know, I've had my close calls, you know, God give me a second chance. I had, you know, four years ago yesterday, I was having a heart cath because of the heart failure I had. Wow. You know, I, I that spent was four years ago. That was four years ago. That was, a, that was my birthday present for my 36th birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, by the way. Oh, thank you. Slightly belated, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to see 36, let alone 40 that I was blessed with turning yesterday. Yeah. Um, but God wasn't done with me yet. That's right. But say he is today. I know where I'm going. Yes, we can be confident well, yeah, in that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I tell you, I actually the last time you were here, your wife got the call as we were get as you were getting out of the truck yeah. that there had been some type of an explosion That's at right. the house next door. That's right. That was the day we were here, so. And, but but to hear the tragedy yeah. of of how that turned out and yet it actually for him it turned out the better. Absolutely. You Much know, better place. Jeremy is not up there wishing he was back down here on this earth. I can <laughs> guarantee that. Yeah. His family's missing him. That's right. You know, his kids are missing him. He has 10, 7, and, and 4 years old that are without a daddy right now. Um, but it was one of the most beautiful funerals I've ever been to, to see how he's lived his life out, hear all the testimonies and what he did, you know. And his mom was up there um, yeah. sharing some beautiful moments. And she said, you know, no matter what, my son wouldn't have been old enough if he lived to be 100. It's all a speck right. when you compare it to eternity. It, Isn't it the truth? Yeah. It, I mean, it, the entirety of Earth's history is still just a speck when compared to eternity. Absolutely. Well, now, tell me just a little bit about the challenges you've had because you didn't even know if you were going to be able to shoot archery so, yeah, I mean, I went on that elk hunt uh, in September, and uh, and right afterwards, I wasn't feeling the greatest. And, of course, I have yearly doctor visits. As a matter of fact, sometimes every month, it seems to be, I'm meeting with a cardiologist or my family doctor because of my heart condition. I mean, I'm 100% paced. I got a pacemaker. I'm, I'm battery operated. If you shut it off, I literally have no heartbeat. Wow. Um, I got a valve that I was born that's bicuspid, and it's worn out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and is wearing out more and more each day, um, as our bodies are, you know? Um, and so I had, uh, in November, some tests that didn't turn out very good. Um, so they had me meet with a surgeon and, uh, thankfully, um, he gave me some pretty good news. I guess my valve has enlarged more, but not to the point of needing surgery at this moment. Okay. Um, he said he might be able to go two years, might be able to go five or 10 and we don't know how long it's going to take to get to that um, point where you need to replace it. But uh, he goes, I don't feel you need to right now. That's good. Prior to that, though, we weren't sure if I was going to be able to compete this year. Yeah. Um, Because I was feeling pretty miserable. My oxygen was dropping. Uh, In turn, they've doubled my medication that I'm on. You know, I, I, I wish I didn't have to take the pills. But, you know, God blessed these doctors and, and give them the knowledge to, to give us these things to, to help us prolong and treat symptoms. That's right. And so, uh, you know, they doubled up some different medications, added another one to me and, and I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, and I'm actually shooting really well right now too. That's so, uh, you know, I, I'm definitely, I, I could be better. There's no doubt about that. We have our moments. Um, but, uh, he blessed me with being able to compete this year. So we're back to doing it. That's uh, good. And so, yeah, I'm excited. I uh, I shot the Michigan Indoor State Championship Friday night uh, just for fun. Uh-huh. Uh, us pros don't get to play. Um, semi-pro on down gets to go get plaques and money and buckles. And, and my, my oldest son actually just become the Michigan uh, Indoor State Champion. Uh, <laughs> so he won that. Um, and I went out there and, and I shot 14 12s that night. I'm like... I'm feeling pretty good. I, you know, we're we're just now getting into the beginning of this tournament season for for three D anyway. That's like I said, always my specialty. Yeah. Um. And and I'm feeling like hey, we might have a pretty decent year out on the range. That's great. Um. But my main focus always at every tournament 
is to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everybody I come in contact with. Well, I, and that's the most important thing, and it should be the most important thing in every one of our lives. Now, it, it looks different for each and every one of us, obviously. Okay, not all of us are called to be a pastor, or not all of us are called to be, uh, but in our own way, we can witness to our next door neighbor or our coworker or our family member that really needs to hear it. They really need to know. So, I mean, the Great Commission Mm -hmm. means that we should be going all out into the entire world sharing that good news, the gospel message. But the entire world starts right here. You don't have to go to a foreign country. You don't have to sign up for missions work to feel like you are you are doing your job. The postman can talk to someone on his delivery route the i mean you know it's it's across the board absolutely you know and it it starts in our homes yeah uh, on how uh how as a husband and a wife you know how how we serve the lord together uh with our children you know if we're blessed to have children and how we raise them uh sharing the truth with them because you got the world that is distorting everything um satan's working overtime I mean, he is. And so uh, it starts with our home. And then where are we going to go from there? You know, um, I'm blessed that all three of my children know the Lord. They're, they've all accepted him as a personal savior and been baptized. And uh, matter of fact, at the West Virginia uh, IBO last year, my youngest son, Jacob, uh, said, Daddy, I want to be baptized. Um, I was doing a baptismal uh, for another young ma- man that I, I led to Christ a couple years prior. And we found this beautiful area out in the mountains. It was a lake. It was cold. It was 50 degrees. But we did that baptism right there wow. uh, as the sun was setting. And then Jacob comes up to me and goes, Daddy, can I get baptized too? And and as a father, that was, that was the most precious thing that, you know. Yes. Um, but that's where it starts, you know. And then from there, God gives us all different gifts. Absolutely. You know, um, he's blessed me with a talent of shooting a bow pretty well. Yeah. And so I have an influence over people that want to learn archery. Okay, so tell me just a little bit about that, because I found that in the world of archery, uh, I've noticed that there are a lot of people, I would say the majority of archers are very strong in the Christian faith. Yeah. But then you have those who are going through challenges, and you have those who who maybe they haven't received Christ yet, or whatever. You meet these kind of people in the field when you go to these different all the events? time, all the time, and and it starts with you know how I represent myself as a Christian. You know, um, I had a few people say, uh, you know, out of all the pro archers, you know, there's a there's a lot of great ones out there, but they said you've always been accessible. You know, like some of I mean, they're out we're out there to do a job, right? You know. Um, but I try and make sure I take the time to meet with everybody I can. Uh, even to my wife at times, she's like, it'd be nice to go to, to the hotel and get some sleep. But, you know, if we can spend time, to, you know, practicing with somebody, having dinner with them, just sharing, loving on them, you know, as just as Christ does for us. Yeah. And so there's a lot of people that have different trials they're going through. Mm-hmm. And uh, I could tell you stories, uh, you know, but they're confidential. But I've had people come up and share some very deep things with me that is hitting them right then. Some of them are Christians, but some of them are searching. Yes. And, uh, and so that's what our booth's there for. You know, we have, we have Bibles that we hand out. We have different teaching materials that we hand out uh, to help people start a relationship with Christ and, and learning how to start that walk with them. You know, I've led a lot of people to Christ, but then I see them at a tournament and then I might not see them again. Right. You know, so we try and, and get them the information to disciple them and, and put them in contact with somebody because, you know, it is so easy for a new believer to turn around and take the wrong path if they're not surrounded by uh, accountability partners, Yes, um, you know, rooted in a church somewhere. Yeah. I remember when I accepted Christ at 11 years old, I was at my grandma's funeral. Mm. And uh, but at the time, my parents weren't going to church. And so, you know, I strayed a little bit. You know, I knew I was born again. Yeah. I had no doubt about that, but I wasn't rooted with anywhere. And I was raised just in a Christian home that, you know, but um, my parents stopped going to the church. Uh, with, there was kind of some splits that happened, you know, with a new pastor. And yeah. and uh, um, and that happens, unfortunately, in churches. And, and they never found another home church for a while. So for my childhood from 11 on, I, I wasn't rooted with anywhere. Well, then I started shooting competitive archery. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, that's why I love this so much because uh, Jesse Moorhead, world famous archer, you know, took me under his wing when I was just a teenager and said, what are you doing tomorrow morning? We're down in Atlanta, Georgia. It was 2001 at the World Championships. And he goes, what are you doing in the morning? I said, well, I'm shooting, you know. He goes, <laughs> well, why don't you come to Sunrise Church Service with me? Oh, yeah. And I said, sure. I, you know, number one, I want to go anywhere Jesse was. Mm-hmm. When you got a professional archer wanting you to come hang, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And and that's why I've always tried to make sure I do the same thing for anybody and, and, and spend as much time with them as I can. So I went to Sunrise Service mainly to hang out with them, yes. you know? And so I'm sitting there in the church service. I'm like, hey, I said, there's Jackie Cottle. That guy's on like a box of Wheaties or something. And there's Jesse and there's, there's these Olympic gold medalists and, and just all these pro archers that were there. And I'm like, this is so cool. Uh huh. And then Brother Wally Harder started to preach. And it was like he was preaching right to me. And the Lord got a hold of me and, and I rededicated my life to Christ at that moment. Wow. And, uh, and through that, you know, here we are, you know, uh, 15, 20 years later, and Lord blessed me with taking over those services. But it was such a life-changing experience then. And uh, as Wally's health kind of, you know, well, he's battling MS, and so he had to retire from the traveling, and, and God was calling me into that ministry. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it is so powerful. You, you don't know who you're going to reach how it's going to affect their life 20 years down the road. but And little did you know that down the road how much that sunrise service would affect you because you kind of fell into place yeah, handling these sunrise services <laughs> at these events. Yes, and so, uh, you know, God's plans are so much greater than ours. Yeah. You know, um, there's, there's different places I've been in life with businesses and everything where – I wondered why didn't that work out? Yeah, you know, I thought this is what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I've been there before, and, and and especially with impatience, right? It's like I'm doing everything I can to try to make this work, and why isn't the Lord making it happen yeah. for me? And it's and it's like Him reminding you. He's like, yes, you're doing all of this, but I've got something either so much better, yes, or I'm preparing you, and six months down the road, just when you least expect it, you will be prepared, and I will place this in your lap. Or it might be five years down the road, I'm going to open up this door, and you'll realize that what's happening today and the struggles you're going through and the challenges in all of this is preparation for what's about to happen. Absolutely, and and that's the thing. (laughs) So... um, there's three fundamentals I, I've been teaching my children in archery and everything and patience form and follow through. Okay. You know, that patience thing, <laughs> so many of us lack because, you know, when we're seeking God and seeking where, you know, our calling is in life, yeah. we don't have that patience. A, a, a lot of us, I mean, I, I know, at least I'm speaking for myself, I'm guilty <laughs> of that. Yep. And uh, so all these times in life where I had an outreach hunting show. Okay. that God called me to, and it was a stepping stone. I didn't know it at the time, but here I was struggling to, you know, try and get the show financed and airing on different networks that shared hunting and shared Christ through it. And I'm like, you know, I thought that's where I was supposed to be, you know, and, and God revealed to me afterwards, that was just a stepping stone to put me where he truly was calling me to. Yeah. But at the time when things were working so well, I was, you know, I wasn't seeing it when it, uh-huh. so... Uh, I think we've all been there. But I, again, I think we can encourage everyone by our experience, experiences, and then we realize that God had a plan all along. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I was sharing with my son, you know, he's getting older and loves archery and he's wanting to get into sports and everything like that. And like like all children, they got dreams of being pro athletes of something, you know, a football yeah. player or whatnot. And, and he really has this love for football building in him and uh, he goes i'd like to go play pray or sorry i'd like to go play pro one day oh, like yeah. i said so would a million other kids right i said god might be calling you to that mm-hmm. but if it doesn't happen just remember god's plans are always so much better than ours that's right you know just like god might call somebody to be a pro archer yeah but if that don't happen God's plans are so much better than ours it's going to be better regardless yeah. you know i look back 16 years old. I didn't know what I wanted to do with life. I, I really didn't know 
where I was supposed to head. And then I started taking pictures through telescopes. I mean, a simple thing like that. Astrophotography, pictures through telescopes. And that first picture that I took, my jaw dropped, hit, jaw hit the floor, you know, and yeah. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. It's beautiful. It's complex. It looks designed. It's this is God's creation. Absolutely. And for the first time it hit me at 17, I was like, I could actually use these photos, share these photos with other people and talk about God's design and creation, but also share the gospel message. And I'm 15 years down the road, here I am doing that. And I never could have imagined it. I was feeling a little bit lost. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Well, it was yeah. at that moment that it finally clicked. Uh, you have God's Country Outdoor Ministries. Yes. Give me your website. So the we have a new website. Well, last time we didn't have that. Yes. So uh, exciting. So now we have a new website. It's uh, www.godscountryoutdoorministries.org. Okay. Uh, which on that website, uh, you can also check out our new YouTube channel that we're starting as well. Congratulations. Uh, so thank you. We're finally uh, upgrading to the 21st century with <laughs> some of this. But uh, so we're excited. Um, and on that website. Uh, you can see some of the events that we're doing, some of the archery tournaments, how we're sharing the gospel, uh, different wild game dinners, sportsmen's banquets, kids camps that we speak at. And uh, and I got one video up on the YouTube channel. I'm, I'm working. I got to get some more up. Uh, the content's there. We just got to get it edited and uploaded. So Well, I can't wait. Uh, be sure to go to that website. Check it out. See what you can do to support what Nick's doing. We love you, Nick. You take care. Uh, we're we're out of time, so I'm just going to um, I'm going to look forward to our next meeting uh, when you can give us another exciting status update. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for having me. All right. Thank you. And this is changing the narrative. I'm David Reeves. Uh, this is uh, this has been one of my passions. I love archery. Just got into it very recently. So. Um, uh, this was an exciting podcast for me. I've enjoyed it a lot, and we'll catch y'all next time. 